knew Ray wouldn't take that crap from him straight through the window. Hey everybody and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Today we're going to be reacting to Season 2, Episode 5 of Mr. In Between called Can't Save You. Interesting title, I wonder what's going to happen. And I presume it's something got to do with Ray and Ali's relationship. Because can't save you is typically what a woman says to a man when she's about to break up with him. Something like that. Something I've heard in the past anyway. Don't know what that says about me. But I'm really looking forward to getting back to joining Ray and the crew. That last episode of Monsters. What a fantastic episode. I really hope you checked it out guys. It's just absolutely one of the best pieces of tv i've ever seen and i've spoken about it enough so you can go and see that reaction so this is why mr in between for me is one of the greatest shows since the soprano on the wire it's just got emotion it's got crime it's action it's got comedy it's just got a little bit of everything and that's why it's so loved by those people who've discovered it which is not enough that's why i reacted to it to try and get more people to watch it numbers aren't great but screw it maybe people will find it later anyway as i always say enough of me yapping on time for jason to shut his mouth and let's get on with the show guys welcome to my party we're just getting started a life is a dream or a nightmare starring uh, which way Stand in. You right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a family outing to the outback countryside, we say here, but outback, same thing, isn't it, in Australia? I got you. Say it. Mm -hmm. Alright, you want to go in? Don't tell me he set up a unicorn for Brit. He has. You see, Ray can be so sweet. He really can. That's going to make his daughters not just day, not just month, not just year. She's going to remember that forever, man. And he brought Bruce and Ali along to see it. I love this. I absolutely love this. Fair play to you, Ray. I presume it's a horse with a horn stuck on it, but you know what I mean. He didn't find a real unicorn, did he? <laughs> man, he's even dyed the mane and everything. Or got someone to do it. Can we take her home? I don't think she'll fit in the car, though. I'm not an emotional guy, but that's so sweet. That's twice in a row now, Mr. In-Between has got me with the whole emotional thing. Put that down. <laughs> the paint's coming off a Ray's hand. Dad, look, it's unicorn poo. Did he? Yeah, put down the unicorn poo, Brett. You don't want to get that on you. See what I mean? She'll never forget and I guarantee you she won't. That's really a wonderful thing that he did for Brett. Really is. That's what's it. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. You got it? Yeah. I'm so glad Bruce got to see it as well. Because we know from the last episode he was feeling quite down talking about ending it when he can't take it anymore and he's been in that mindset a few times before. So he needs things like that to lift his spirit. Gary's the unicorn maker. Fantastic. Nice to see Gary involved in something other than a porn scandal. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Don't tell me you super clip Gary. Oh man, you'll never get that off without ripping the poor horse's head. You'll have to take it to a vet. <laughs> So Ray's with what? His ex-wife? What's up? Britt said you had the sex talk with her? Yeah, he did have the sex talk with her. He didn't have a choice. But if you're going to have those kind of conversations with her, you at least flag it with me first. He didn't have time to. Well, I couldn't flag it with you because she caught us having sex. Exactly. Mom, can we go bowling? Of course you can go bowling, sweetie. Cool. Awesome. Good one, Ray. Well played. I used to go bowling with my daughter. Loved it. Long time ago now, though. I spent an hour this morning going from place to place just trying to find a normal breakfast. What happened to bacon and eggs on toast? Who's this dude? I have to agree with this, and maybe it's just a symptom of my age because I'm a similar age to these guys, grumpy middle-aged men, but whatever happened to just a coffee... Just simple stuff. As he said, everything's overcomplicated now. And I think it's really just a marketing con job to get more money out of us. But look at this. It's an imported bloody quail egg with a spinach leaf from Bolivia and uh, a brioche bun from France and a Dijon mustard from Belgium. 
and now with that 682 euro please just want eggs and bacon man just just make me an egg sandwich will you can i have a drink dad what do you say please dad because you are the best dad in the universe that's it melt that out of the kid if they're demanding your money daddy what what's that smell what smell the cigarette smell no no must be one of the neighbors she knows you smoking. You can never hide it. I know when I used to smoke real cigarettes, it's the same. You can never hide it. Yeah, I used to smoke. But not anymore. Pinky swear. I'm not going to pinky swear. Look, I, you know. It's a big fat lie, Ray. We both know it. Britt knows it as well. I have one occasionally, right? Why did you lie? Because I don't want you knowing that I smoke. Or will you stop for me? Yeah, see, the kids nowadays are so educated, they know not to smoke. When I was young and growing up, it was kind of a done thing, because all the adults smoked. And to be grown up, you wanted to smoke, because it made you feel grown up. Me and my friends used to club our pocket money together, go to meet up after mass every Sunday, and uh, go and buy a packet of cigarettes and share them on the way home. <laughs> We're like 10, 11, 12. Ridiculous looking back. I promise you I'll try to quit, okay? I can't guarantee you 100% that I can do it, but I'll try, okay? Oh, the guilt trip so hard you want to stop but it's hard to promise because it's an addiction is it from bruce from uncle bruce oh, okay mm. i remember the episode name was can't save you he promised ali him and brit at least would go to ali's family for christmas something must kick off causing ali to break up with him it's a long time ago since i've seen it so we'll see do you want your present now you got me a present mm -hmm. sure i wrote you some jokes He's, he's going to get a stand-up show. Poor Brucey from Brit. What's brown and sticky? I don't know. What? A stick. No. I love how this show can put in such moments of sweetness and just have that emotional roller coaster or put you on these absolute emotional highs and then slams you back down with the emotional lows like we had last week. <laughs> Very good. Very uh, good. good. Bravo. Very, thank you, beautiful. <laughs> Terrible kids jokes. My daughter used to do this to me when she was young as well. I used to buy her this magazine and it always had jokes in it and she used to read them all out to me. And of course you have to laugh. Some of them were funny in fairness. What'd you get me, man? You. Mm. Oh, you got me one of those. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll get you, I'll, I'll get you the same thing, but I'll get you two of them. <laughs> I get a lot of Bruce's presents every year, I can tell you that. All right, you sure you don't want to come? No, I don't want You look beautiful. Thanks, Thanks mate. Nice you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, right. Bruce doesn't think you're beautiful, man. See you in a bit. Yeah. I'm still kind of worried about Bruce after that conversation last week, where he's kind of end of life stage thinking. You didn't have to do that. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So I'm sure Ali comes from a wonderfully middle class family. Well, Ray seems to come from quite an unconventional background. Army, hitman, ex-wife. point I'm trying to make is there could be a bit of a culture clash here. A beer, wine? Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great, yeah. Come on outside. Oh, yeah, come yeah. on. This is where it's all happening. Although Ray is quite charming, we've seen it with uh, the guy who, the actor who got to borrow the money to do his teeth. Ray met his mum out of the blue and was very charming, so he can pull it off. So, what do you get if you cross a skeleton with a famous detective? What, Dad? Sherlock Bones. Heard it before. Hey, Ray, ever played Secret Santa before? No, nah, mate. Oh, mate, you are in for the time of your life. Oh, no, what a day to give up the fags, man. The cigarettes, we call cigarettes fags over here. Doesn't mean the drugs return, but man, I've been there. You're cranky, you're craving. You don't want to be doing that when you're meeting your girlfriend's family. That's too much stress on top as well, man. If they don't like their present, they can swap it with number one, which means number 12 is the best place to be. So the first person picks a present and everyone after that can swap their present for the person that picked before them. So if you're number four, you can swap for one, two, three. Okay, I get it. Oh, how it? to insult people in 50 languages. <laughs> how useful. Oh, that's perfect for you, love. That. <laughs> that's actually a good idea. I like that game. Might bring it into my own family Christmas. You never know. <laughs> a unicorn. Brit's going to want the unicorn. She's obsessed with them. Okay. I'm going to have to swap. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. no. He got Brit the unicorn. Fair play, Ray. Well, I think I like what's in the box. Oh, you're not. Trent. Trent. Come on. Really? What sort of knobhead does that to a kid, man? 
Seriously, what is wrong with this dude? It's even a girl's toy, a little girl's toy. Ah, and you can see the look on her face, man. Ugh, dickhead. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Ray's going to have a word and he's going to be cranky after coming off the cigarettes as well in his withdrawals. Uh, you know that, uh, that unicorn candle? Is there any chance you can give it back? Why? Why? Because you took it off a child. Yeah, I was hoping maybe, you know, you can give it back and, you know, I'll uh, try you a hundred bucks or something. Do I look like I need the money? He shouldn't even have to bribe you, man. If you had any decency, you'd give it back to the little kid. Okay, this guy's a prick. Ray, just beat him. But he can't, he's Ali's brother. What, why are you being a dickhead? <laughs> yeah, I think one of us is being a dickhead. Yeah, the guy with the beard and the ponytail, man. You're a grown man. What the f do you want with a fing girly candle? Exactly, Ray. He's just been a prick for the sake of it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Ray wouldn't take that crap from him straight through the window. But yeah, Ali's going to be upset in front of the family, man. At Christmas, first impressions and all that. Mom. And this little prick is calling for his mother. He's about 30. Hold up, kiss, kiss. He's definitely in trouble with Ali. Definitely. And it's a pity because he was so good. Remember that guy at the ice cream truck who was being a prick and he didn't engage with him? Wrong time to give up cigarettes, man. He knows it too, look. And she's really good for him, Ali is. She suits him. She's a keeper. <laughs> this ain't gonna go well. All he can do is beg for forgiveness and just blame the cigarette withdrawals. That's what I would do. And the stress of meeting the family, you know? Brit caught me smoking this morning. And um, she made me promise to give up and I hadn't smoked all day and... Fair enough. He's using my excuse lines. Good man. It's all you can do. You okay? No. <laughs> no, she's not right. I bet you, bro. Yeah. yeah. How do you think? Well, he was being a dick, Ellie. You have to admit he was being a dick taking the unicorn candle off Brit. So you have to give Ray that much. That guy that I was engaged to, yeah. He had demons like you. He used to lash out and punch walls. This is not sounding good if she's talking about her fiance she broke up with. After that, he kicked me, punched me. And every time, you know, he'd say, sorry. Okay, Ali, hold up here. Ray hasn't done any of those things to you. You cannot blame him for the mistakes of someone else. Unless, and this is really bad, Ali, unless you used Ray because he's similar to your fiance, and you used him to substitute the loss of your fiance. Because then you're just a user. And I, you've gone way down in my estimation if that's the case. And as I said, if it's not the case, you cannot blame Ray for someone else. And what they did to you. Not condoning what that other guy did, by the way. The fiance for beating you. But can't blame Ray. I thought that I could save him. And I tried. I really, really tried. But I couldn't. Well, that much is true, Ali. There's a darkness in you. Now it scares me. I'll never hit you. That's what he used to say. So that's it. Yeah. See, there's an interesting thing here, and it's quite common in relationships, right? You, there's a saying in Ireland, and it's a saying I very much agree with. Women get with men to change them, right? They think it's a product that they can mould into the finished article that they have in their head. While men get with women, so they stay the same, which they never do. And that's why you have so many relationships that end up breaking up or getting divorced, right? Because they come in with two different ideas, right? Men just want women to stay the way they are. Just don't change, love. I like you just as you are. Women going, eh, you're okay, but I can make you better. <laughs> and of course, people don't change. They are who they are within limits, right? They can adjust up or down, but you have boundaries you're going to stay within, and that's it. And Ray... She's right, does have a darkness, and that's because of his other life. Yeah. Mm. Look after yourself. You too. Ray's devastated. He was so lonely, if we remember, before he met Ali. He was just sitting in this empty house, playing the PlayStation. Ray, I think you should fight a little harder here. I think Ali, there's still a chance to turn the ship around. I think she wants you to push there. I mean, push as in fight for the relationship. Stand up and say, look, I'm not your fiance. 
I know he did say he'd never hit her, but fight a bit harder. Maybe he feels like there's no point. I don't know. Maybe he's right. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back. That was season two, episode five of Mr. In Between called Can't Save You. And we know, we know the reason it was given that title. Ray has lost Ali. I'm not going to go into the reasons why I spoke about that enough in commentary. But it's a shame. I think Ray is going to feel that loss a lot. I think he really cared for Ali. She was heavily involved with Brit as well. Brit really liked her. She was good for him. We've seen that he, he was changing with her around him. And we've seen that towards how he didn't react towards the guy in the ice cream van a couple of episodes ago. I think she's been harsh on Ray. I think she should have understood her brother was being a complete dickhead. I have no idea why she didn't stand up for Brit actually looking back when her brother took the candle off. She, I know there was a couple of murmurs in the family but she should have actually went up and just took it off the brother and gave it back to Brit and dealt with the situation that her brother caused right. Not Ray her brother. No Ray shouldn't have reacted the way he did but he was coming off cigarettes and he is a hitman so he's a violent guy by nature so yeah and particularly after the whole unicorn thing at the start and Ali knowing how much Brit cared for unicorns she should have done a lot more so I think she's partially responsible I didn't like how she compared Ray to her ex I saw his problem he's not the ex but I think Ray was too weak in fighting for the relationship I think Ali wanted him to step up to the plate and, and just you know say I love you too he didn't say that to her and when he seen her crying he should have gone back up and hopefully he did it ended just there so hopefully he did but I can't remember I don't think that happened from what I remember so it's quite sad at least though now he's not living on his own he has Bruce in the apartment and Bruce isn't in a good place either and I think it was good for Bruce to have Ali around the place you know not two miserable men so that's not going to be no good for Bruce's mental state either yeah sad episode two kind of we had again the emotional roller coaster the sweetness of the start with what he did for Brit with the unicorn and getting Gary to paint the horse and stick a horn on it which Gary can't get off of course being Gary a bit of a, uh, an idiot then we had the complete low at the end there so again wonderfully written wonderfully directed episode the series just continues to get better and better as I remember and wonderful acting by Scott Ryan and Ali actually and little Brit as well with the unicorn so kudos all around anyway guys that's it that's all I have to say in this episode Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and please, please share the video. I need your help to get out to a wider audience. If you are interested in checking out my full length reaction, you can find a link to my Patreon below in the pinned comments and in the video description. You can avail of a seven day free trial where you'll get access to all of my full length reactions, including exclusive reactions to shows such as Band of Brothers and Battlestar Galactica 2006. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. God bless and bye for now.